know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. The skyline of Mumbai hides within it vestiges of a past that shaped this commercial hub of India. The city was once a clutch of islands, each with a protective fort that acted as important watchtowers and garrisons. Over the last 400 years, different powers fought over them. Sadly, many of these forts are forgotten, neglected and are now getting swallowed up by the ever-expanding urban sprawl of the city. The headquarters of the State Directorate of Archaeology and Museums is interestingly based out of the bastion that is the only remnant of the Fort George built by the British in 1770. With slits for guns and an underground crevice opening up into the sea, which once touched its walls, this was to be a refuge for British officers in case of a war with the French. So how important were the forts of Bombay in the city's history? And why should they be saved? At present, we are looking at Bombay or Mumbai as homogeneous entity or as a one city. But at that point of time, you know, the Salcid Islands and uh, or the Safti and this part were entirely two different entities. And you know, there were several forts which were littered over the, the island of Bombay. To start with Mahim, uh, it was the capital of King Bimba. And uh, this was a dynasty which essentially shifted from South Gujarat or Champanet to Mumbai. And Mahim was the capital, it was called as Mahikavati. But if you look at present day structure at Mahim, uh, it takes more or less shape in Muslim period. You know, after uh, Hindu kings, uh, Gujarat was also ruled by sultans of Gujarat for quite a long period. And that is also reflected on Bombay Island. So basically, Mahim, you see a lot of Desi elements. Uh, uh, well, uh, later on that fort was redesigned by Portuguese and as well as British. But still, essence, uh, namely uh, circular bastions. If you look at uh, other structures uh, in Bombay, they essentially have either triangular bastions, as uh, you can see in case of Worli, or even in Shivdi, there is a triangular bastion, and or uh, rectangular bastions of this fashion, uh, which is uh, typically of European style. So that reminds us that. Uh, the fortification, history of fortification of Bombay or Mumbai, almost it's 800 years old. And uh, besides Mahim, in later on in Portuguese period, you get to see construction of Bandra and Verli forts. And n number of Chaukis came up all along the coast. Because uh, there was still uh, war going on between Uddiyan, the Sultan of Gujarat, there are Mughals. If there are Marathas, there are local Kholis, there are Portuguese, there are British, so there are n number of players. So what were they fighting over Tejas? Because all of these were actually uninhabited or, you know, very forested islands before the Portuguese and uh, the British came here. The activity was Mahim and northwards, not only right. southwards, right. you know. So what were they fighting about? See, uh, south and east, uh, there were a lot of uh, fishermen or so Koli villages. Yeah. And today, many of the villages are unfortunately labelled as slum areas, but uh, they are the original dwellers of Bombay. And uh, if you look at eastern part, uh, this has got uh, capacity of having a natural dock. Even today, if you see, uh, you don't have a modern docks towards the west of Bombay, but they are towards the east of Bombay. So naturally, there is a good uh, depth in water. So, all the docks could come on the eastern side and this was really a good trade gateway. The many forts of Mumbai, stretching from Vasai in the north to the fort of the fort area in the south, played an important role. Today, they are lonely sentinels, being literally pulled down under the weight of encroachments. 
Ironically, it is the oldest and most significant fort in the city, the Mahim Fort, that is worst off. Bhal Chandra Kulkarni, who has authored one of the most detailed books of the forts of Bombay, tells us about this 800-year-old fort. The fort as we see it today was not the original fort of Mahim. The original fort of Mahim was built by Bimbas, Pratapa Bimba in particular. And though the exact date is not known, we may say at the end of the 12th century or at the beginning of the 13th century, the fort was built. Later, it was conquered by Portuguese and Portuguese reappropriated that fort for their own purposes. And there we find considerable changes have taken place in Mahim Port. Today, unfortunately, the Mahim Port is crowded with all slums. But we do have photographs to show what the nature of those fort was. And in that we find the bell tower as we find in Varali Fort. Looking out into the sea at the water's edge in Verli, overlooking the sea link and the Bandra Fort across, you can imagine the Portuguese fleet that would have sailed in to try and capture the Mahim Fort in 1516. Sadly, today even the officials of the Directorate of Archaeology can't enter this fort. There are thousands of people who are squatting in shanties like this within the fort and around it. You can't even walk in. At present, I think Mahim is facing really a precarious problem. It was with customs until 1960s and though we notified that as a protected monument, the land was never handed over to the state government. So unfortunately, uh, a legal call could not be taken. Uh, The entire fort is encroached by uh, slums and now it's, it's even difficult to enter the fort. Luckily, nobody has actually demolished the fortification walls. But even they have constructed slums on top of that, without disturbing the original contour of the fort. We did a joint survey with MMRDA uh, in order to relocate them. And it is costing us about uh, 16-17 crores. And uh, we are hoping to get it done in future. As you know, there is tremendous uh, pressure of real estate in Bombay. And land is scanty. And... uh, as compared to modern architecture or high riser buildings, this forts were quite humble entity, you know, not rising more than 30 or 40 feet from the ground level. And today in urban landscape, they are kind of shadowed. And if you look at government policies, there was a policy of protection out of which we have protected six forts uh, in Bombay. Uh, Archaeological Survey of India has protected the uh, fort in Cyan. They do have policy of uh, conservation of area of about 300 meters, which is practically very difficult in Bombay. And well, we do not have uh, any uh, definition of area surrounding the forts, but uh, we have defined a protected area and we are trying to protect that. For example, uh, you get to see uh, slums right next to Fort of Early. Now, uh, even stories are increasing. So, in a way, they are also uh, encroaching upon the uh, landscape of Fort. And in few days, Fort may not be visible. But luckily, uh, we had a meeting with Bombay Municipal Commissioner, Mr. Pravin Singh Pradeshi. And he visited some of the forts and he has initiated a special drive to clear encroachments from the forts and a lot of data is being exchanged between these two government departments and I'm hoping to have clear skylines for all the protected forts of Bombay in coming years. What are the challenges over there? Because encroachment is a serious issue Tejas, in most areas right. in Bombay. Uh, you know, also it doesn't help that many of these structures are under different jurisdictions. Uh, some with the state archaeology department, some with the center, some under the BMC for everyday management. You know, what is the situation? See, first of all, lack of manpower is one issue. So, uh, in spite of having uh, n number of advanced systems of surveillance, nothing can replace uh, human agency. You have to have a physical watchman in order to protect the property. And for 371 monuments, we have about 80 watchmans 
So bad ratio is 377 monuments where across the Maharashtra. Okay. And in Bombay for uh, for say all of these forts together how six, many people uh, we have three watchmen. Three watchmen for six monuments. Yeah. That's not going to help. So well they take regular rounds but that really doesn't help. But uh, in recent years uh, we are in dialogue with BMC and at some places they have agreed to uh, give us security guards. For example, for Shivdi, uh, we worked out a joint project of night illumination of Shivdi Fort. And then uh, they have agreed up, uh, to give us uh, watchmen for next one year. While the Mahim Fort is the worst off, others have their own set of problems. At the heart of the crisis are the lack of funds and manpower. The Directorate of Archaeology and Museums, Maharashtra, has over 370 monuments under it. Out of these, 51 are forts. Six of the forts are in Mumbai and surrounding areas. The annual budget of the Directorate is roughly around 34 crore rupees. Of this, around 22 crore rupees is spent on conservation across the over 370 monuments. 10 crores goes to museums. The paucity of funds also means that the directorate has no money to staff itself properly. There are only three guards, for instance, to guard the six forts of Mumbai. Given this, they can just about take one round in each fort each day. You will be shocked to hear that in 2018-19, the budget for actual excavations, the job that any directorate of archaeology should do, was just two and a half lakh rupees. What's more, excavations are allowed only in protected monuments and sites. The issue of encroachments is also the biggest issue in Mumbai. While it has been mandated that there can't be any building work 300 feet around a monument, which is a buffer zone, this is not followed. The fact that there are multiple agencies managing these monuments also doesn't help. A solution to the problem could have been to cash in on the prime location of these forts and transform them into tourist hubs to make them viable. Vasai, for instance, the sprawling 16th century Portuguese city, could be developed into a perfect weekend getaway. The Sivri Fort, also built by the Portuguese and later rebuilt by the British, can be developed into a scenic site. It also has the advantage of offering a great viewing point for bird watchers as these swamps are breeding grounds for flamingos between November and February each year. The Cyan Fort, perched at a height, offers a great view of the Mumbai city. And Wali is perhaps the best location, as it is on prime land. One of the most commercially successful forts of Mumbai is the Bandra Fort. This is in an area considered one of the most expensive real estate hubs in the country. A prime location for events, the Directorate of Archaeology often lets out this property for them. But sadly, rather than ploughing back the profits here, the money earned by the Bandra Fort is sent to the department's central kitty and gets swallowed up for other projects. There, it is a drop in the ocean. Now, the hope is to get the administration and well-meaning individuals and corporates to help. We are in process to make a site management plan to identify who are the stakeholders and most probably uh, we will take uh, also help from corporates in order to uh, do this landscaping around the fort. There is also one NGO called Nagar who did the survey of all the forts and they have also come up with a report in form of what could be done around them, what kind of landscaping is required and what kind of signages needs to be put on fort. And uh, we have vouched that, we have suggested some changes and we have also submitted that to BMC. So, uh, they are likely to take call up on that. Who's going to foot the bill for this? At the end of the day, <laughs> it comes down to that, True. right? Who's going to foot the bill for it? So, I think it's joint responsibility ah. of state government and BMC. And up to an extent, wherever possible, we will also take help from corporates. I uh, will also approach uh, Bombay Port Trust in case of Shivdi. So many agencies are involved in this. But I think major stakeholders are uh, State Department of Archaeology and BMC. But tell me 
they, they just one of the challenges is really if you spend money then what so right. you can't right. be just about restoring it because that's not viable and right. we have to be practical about it right? right so one of the issues is why don't you make these in a city star the public spaces mm-hmm. can you not develop these into tourist hubs into areas of recreation into some kind of you know delhi cool. has done a very good job with horse mm-hmm. cars for instance and right. the, the city fort area for instance can something like that be worked or do you think the problem is too large for a solution like that no uh, i think uh, there is also a government scheme of adoption of monument mm-hmm. and uh, for government of maharashtra it was put in place uh, pretty early as compared to the policy of the central central government uh, the government of maharashtra has adoption scheme right from 2008 and after restoration i think uh, somebody can adopt that monument in order to make that place lively so as you suggested there could be concerts there could be educational programs or uh, that can be utilized as a public space so it's it's open but 2008 onwards what is the success story that you could cite as an example well uh, after 2008 there were only two monuments uh, birthplace of yashwantrao chavan and naldurga fort mm. which were adopted under this scheme first was by yashwantha tahan pratishthan and another was uh, multicon uh, utility so, uh, this was a private entity uh, but now in past two years we have uh, approach in number of corporates so i would say uh, and recently we have signed an agreement with uh, rpg foundation for banganga tank and uh, we have also signed an agreement uh, with uh, savarkar uh, pratishthan for maintenance of birthplace of uh, veer savarkar and uh, mira bhaindra municipal corporation for godbandar fort so uh, in future we are expecting that this uh, concerned agencies will look after this monument for next 10 years so for last two years it's not a bad number walk into one of these forts and it is quite an experience but it is also quite an eye opener These sentinels of a bygone era that shaped the poor city of Bombay are today struggling to survive. They must be saved to understand Mumbai's great legacy.